Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. In a past period, about 65 million years ago, the world was dominated by large predators, and a group of small carnivores was feeding by the seaside. Suddenly, the feared and gigantic Tyrannosaurus rex, T. rex, approaches to catch some of these smaller carnivores. It successfully hunts them, even though they briefly escaped into the water. He was certain of another meal, when suddenly, from below, he is devoured by a colossal megalodon, turning the poor T. rex into nothing more than a morning snack. Now, in the present day, four years after the events involving prehistoric predators in the South China Sea, somewhere in the Philippine Sea, we see Jonas. After exercising, he emerges from a container on a cargo ship. Jonas sneaks through the containers, taking pictures of men illegally dumping barrels of radioactive material into the ocean. He then enters one of the cabins and photographs some documents. Inside a cage nearby, there's a macaw making noise, which attracts the attention of one of the men who enters the cabin. Jonas briefly distracts the man and then knocks him out. Other men arrive, and Jonas takes them down too. Outside, he runs and is chased. He manages to shake off some of them along the way, but soon finds himself cornered. His only option is to fight, and he does so with great skill. The ship's captain orders to bring him back, dead or alive, and at one point, Jonas finds himself cornered again. However, after a brief distraction where he claims they'll be arrested for environmental crimes, Jonas jumps into the ocean. The men laugh at him, saying he'll have to swim over 320 kilometers to the coast, but Jonas doesn't seem worried. Shortly after, his friend Mac arrives with his plane and rescues Jonas. They land, and Jonas hands over the evidence he obtained. Meanwhile, at an oceanic institute in China, we see the director, Zhou Ming, testing a special underwater suit that grants the user immense physical strength. His niece, Mei Ying, reminds him of the celebration later. That same night, Jonas arrives at the event at the institute, where he meets Zhou Ming, who is celebrating the institute's 10th anniversary. Hilary Driscoll, one of the technologists at the institute, begins the opening remarks, and then hands the microphone to Zhou Ming. After a brief introduction, he presents a megalodon, claiming it's the only one in captivity worldwide, found and raised there since it was a pup. Due to this, they've learned a lot about the species. He also mentions that thanks to various supporters' donations, they'll be able to explore deeper into the ocean than ever before. The following day, Jonas, who has been raising Mei Ying since her mother Suwayan died, tells her that she can't join the dive they're about to make into the trenches to study new forms of marine life. As they talk, Zhou Ming's assistant, Raigas, mentions that he's in the water swimming with the megalodon. Both Jonas and Mei Ying express concern about the danger, but Zhou Ming explains that he's conducting an experiment and that he's been swimming with the megalodon since it was a pup. He shows them a sonar device, one click calls the megalodon to him, and two clicks make it swim away. They see the colossal size of the creature, which, after two clicks, alters its course. However, after briefly diverting, the megalodon approaches rapidly again. Zhou Ming gives the command to stop the creature with the clicks, but it doesn't work. He tries to activate the emergency escape device, but the megalodon quickly reaches him, disappearing from view. For a moment, everyone thinks it ended terribly, and he was eaten, but suddenly he reappears behind them, having successfully escaped at the last moment. Following this, Zhou Ming tells Jonas that this behavior is unusual for that megalodon, as it has been acting strangely all week. Sometime later, Jonas, Zhou Ming, Mei Ying, and the team travel to a marine research center called Mana One. Meanwhile, back at the institute where Zhou Ming is the director, the megalodon manages to escape through a weak point in the oceanic intake gate. Back with the diving team, they are now ready and begin their journey to the unexplored depths of the ocean. Apart from Jonas and Zhou Ming, the team consists of Rigas and another woman named Sal, all aboard the same submarine as Jonas. Another submarine carries Zhou Ming and two more crew members. Suddenly, Jonas and the team are surprised when they see Mei Ying has secretly joined the mission as well. Jonas is quite upset and initially wants to abort the mission, but he is convinced by the others, believing that nothing major would happen, so Mei Ying could stay. As she sits down, they're in for another surprise, Zhou Ming's megalodon has swum over and is rapidly approaching them. They decide to continue since the creature is faster and now following them. They accelerate forward and dive even deeper, surpassing the hydrogen sulfide layer. They believe that the megalodon won't follow them that deep, 
but then there's yet another surprise, along with Jiuming's Megalodon, two more are nearby. They try to distance themselves from the creatures, but soon realize they are in the midst of a mating cycle, which explains the odd behavior of Jiuming's Megalodon. Feeling more at ease with the Megalodons distracted, they come across an area with geothermal activity and then unexpectedly encounter something else. It appears to be a large structure that they initially think might be a shipwreck, but they quickly realize it's not. Upon closer inspection, they discover that it's a highly advanced technological structure. Suddenly, their sonar indicates the presence of another submarine above them. These are other explorers, but they're resource hunters. The leader, Montez, is there personally to oversee operations. They also notice Jonas and the others, so to eliminate evidence of their activities and avoid being caught, Montez triggers an explosive that his men just installed. These men are in specialized deep-sea suits. A massive explosion occurs, hurling debris in various directions. Montez hurriedly tries to flee the area, but due to the explosion, the Megalodons become agitated and attack his submarine. The explosion is so enormous that it ruptures the hydrogen sulfide layer that had kept these prehistoric creatures in their habitat, creating a massive hole. As the group tries to escape, Jonas's submarines are hit and damaged. The situation worsens as more debris continues to pelt the area, and eventually, they lose all communication. The base team attempts to make contact but fails, prompting Mac to instruct his assistant, Jess, to prepare the rescue sub to go after the teams below. However, while inspecting the vehicle, Jess discovers a serious malfunction that she concludes is sabotage, the issue is irreparable. Jonas's submarine is stuck, and they assess the damages. They are without communication and oxygen is running out. Rigas manages to fix the communication device, allowing them to connect with the base, bringing some relief to Mac. Jonas states that they're in dire straits, and they'll need to don their suits and that he'll need a ride. Mac informs him that they don't have a means to reach them, so Jonas thinks for a moment and suggests they'll have to walk. He explains that they'll suit up and walked across the trench and reach the underwater station. Mac argues that it's too dangerous, but Jonas insists it's their only option. With only two hours of oxygen in each suit and a distance of three kilometers to cover, the team quickly suits up, leaves the sub, and presses forward. Luckily, Jonas encounters Jiuming and his team, who have also survived. Now united, they continue onward to cross the trench. Back at the base, Mac discusses the possibility of a spy among them and asks DJ to analyze security footage from the sabotaged submarine over the last 24 hours, while Jesse looks into personnel files for anything suspicious. In the ocean's depths, once again, Jonas and the rest of the crew continue to push forward. Suddenly, one of the crew members feels something moving around him and is quickly taken by something. The rest of the team further ahead doesn't realize what's happening until it's too late, and they're left without knowing what happened to their colleague, who left behind only his helmet. Seeing they can't do anything more for him, Jiuming suggests they continue, as staying still is too perilous. In another location not far away, Montez survives and is inside his damaged submarine, attempting to repair communication. He succeeds and speaks to his accomplice, who is revealed to be Hillary, the same woman who presented at Jiuming's Institute celebration, making her the traitor. Montez tells her he managed to eliminate the Mana 1 personnel, but Hillary informs him he failed, and the team with Jiuming is actually headed for the station. She asserts that if they reach it, they'll be in serious trouble. Meanwhile, Jonas's group reaches a pitch black section they must traverse, which is challenging as their lights are very conspicuous and attractive to predators. They attempt to lessen the intensity by changing the light colors and continue forward, but Jonas senses they are being observed. Fortunately, they manage to approach and spot the base of Station Mana 1. However, with 400 meters still to go and oxygen dropping to 7%, they must stay calm to reach the destination. Yet, Jiuming's sonar picks up multiple approaching points. Jonas orders everyone to run to the station, and as they glimpse what's coming, they see the same predators from the beginning, being preyed upon by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The predators speed towards them, and Jonas and the others start shooting to defend themselves. However, outnumbered, the predators manage to see some of them, and Meiying is dragged by two of them. Fortunately, their suits are highly resistant, and she survives. Jonas manages to grab Meiying back, freeing her from the creature's grip, but more carnivores arrive. Jiuming then activates a powerful signal light, temporarily scaring the creatures away. 
However, the situation turns dire again when they spot the Megalodons approaching, lured by the light. Joming attempts to distract them by running in another direction, but Jonas stops him from doing something foolish, takes his light, and tosses it elsewhere. The Megalodon is quickly attracted to the light, biting into a steel structure, destroying it along with the other Megalodons. Seizing the opportunity while the monsters are distracted, they all rush to enter the station. Jonas and Maying are nearly caught by one of the Megalodons that lunges at them, but Jonas swiftly maneuvers to save Maying. Joming and Sal run together, but one of the Megalodons spots them and charges aggressively. Almost out of oxygen in her suit, Sal realizes they'll be caught and pushes Joming away, sacrificing herself so he can escape, and she's subsequently devoured. Joming narrowly escapes, and Jonas, with Maying, catches up, and together they run for the decompression chamber. Outside, Rigas and another member of Joming's team are there, but her helmet is cracked and about to shatter. They manage to enter the chamber, and before the decompression process is complete, her helmet implodes due to the immense pressure still surrounding them. Joming mourns the loss, but nothing can be done. After the Megalodons lose interest in them, they remove their suits and venture deeper into the Mana 1 facility. Jonas and the others remain vigilant, sensing something is amiss. They enter a chamber and notice enemies taking advantage of the chaos to transport precious stones to the surface in escape boats. Jonas instructs Maying to establish communication with Jess, and when they succeed, he informs her of the situation, revealing the places involved in illegal mining. Jess explains the submarine was sabotaged, but they don't know by whom. The group presses on and finds some of Joming's projects in another location. The four reach the escape pods, but the controls are unresponsive. Jonas asks Rigas to seal the compartment to test if that works, but the door shuts automatically. They realize Jess is behind this and is willing to sacrifice their lives. She ejects one of the pods and tells Rigas she can save Maying, but only if she shoots Jonas in the chest. Wanting to save Maying, Rigas points her gun at Jonas, and Maying pleads with her not to. Jonas, however, steps away and suggests Rigas shoot him to save Maying. Unable to do it, Jess releases the last pod. She later communicates with Hillary, who orders her to eliminate the entire group. She starts flooding the compartment with water. Joming cuts communication and opens one of the escape pods. The plan is for Jonas to enter the decompression chamber and then exit to get into another one nearby. It's a risky move, but if he doesn't do it, everyone will die. However, to achieve this, he needs to exhale all the air from his lungs, giving him a maximum of 60 seconds to reach the other chamber and initiate decompression before passing out. He heads outside and spots a megalodon nearby. He continues toward the other compartment, but before he can enter, a creature attacks him. He quickly shoots it and manages to get inside the compartment, activates the closure and decompression, but he ends up passing out due to the extreme conditions. When he wakes up, he realizes Montez has carried him to another location. However, knowing Montez is his enemy, Jonas attacks him. Not wasting time, as his friends are in trouble, he subdues his opponent, but Montez is a skilled fighter and throws Jonas into one of the mining machines. Jonas escapes the dangerous situation, shoves Montez from a significant height, rendering him unconscious. Jonas goes to the computers to help his friends, but he's surprised when Montez attacks him again. Being an excellent fighter, Jonas evades Montez's strikes and knocks him out again. Then, he opens the compartment door where his friends are and rescues them. On the surface, helicopters under Jess's orders approach the Mana 1 facility. Next, we see Mac, who gained access to the security files, discovering that Jess sabotaged the submarine and showing it to JD. Meanwhile, Jonas and the others head to Tomas's submarine, but they need a distraction to escape the Megalodons. Joming goes outside and turns on the lights on the facility's exterior. He succeeds, but the Megalodons are fast and attack the place frenziedly, shaking the entire structure. The facility starts collapsing, but fortunately, Joming arrives in time, they seal the hatch, and manage to move away from the site. After crossing the depth's limit and inside the submarine, Joming finds explosives. Looking outside, they realize the explosions created a large hole, which would take some time to close. However, shortly thereafter, unnoticed by them, a massive tentacled creature emerges through the hole. On the other hand, Montez, still alive and in a suit, manages to escape the location and uses a balloon to rise to the surface. Back at the Mana 1 base, Jess arrives with some soldiers at the room where Mac and DJ are, 
but they don't open the door for her. However, DJ grabs pepper spray and a taser and decides to open the door and attack. The plan works, they partially blind the soldiers and shock Jess, then manage to leave the area. The submarine and Jonas reach the surface, and they quickly get on the platform and hide from Hillary's soldiers. Soon, Montez also emerges and approaches Mana 1. Mac and DJ, after dealing with Jess and her men, encounter two more armed soldiers. Fortunately, DJ acts swiftly, knocks down the two soldiers, and incapacitates them, but they become targets for gunfire. To escape, they leap into the sea. They manage to resurface, and DJ, prepared, uses his weapon to shoot at the soldiers. The two sneak in quietly but end up being captured. As they are being led through the corridors, Joming emerges from one of the cabins and pretends to take Jonas hostage. This serves as a distraction for Jonas to attack the soldiers and finish them off with his friend's help. Montez enters the control room where Jess is with her men. He is pleased to see her again but informs her that Jonas is alive and at Mana 1. Upon this revelation, she orders them to search for him. Meanwhile, Rigas and Mei-Ying prepare their escape and observe a trio of megalodons approaching the platform. Jess converses with Hillary, and they imagine the grand victory they are about to achieve, assuming control of the Man of One facility. However, the megalodons draw near, and Jess confidently asserts that the glass is resistant to their attacks. Unfortunately for her, this statement proves false when one of the megalodons effortlessly smashes through the glass and devours her, instantly killing her. Montez manages to escape the chamber just in time and laments the loss. Back with Jonas's group, they board a lifeboat and decide not to start the engines to avoid attracting the megalodons. They row slowly and in silence. Fortunately, they go unnoticed by a massive megalodon. On the other hand, the soldiers grab another lifeboat and start the engines to pursue the group, but Montez quickly warns them and orders them to turn off the engines. One of the soldiers then takes aim at Jonas. However, it's too late. Soon, a megalodon attacks them and swallows them rapidly. Seizing this distraction, Jonas starts the engines and accelerates. Hillary, in her helicopter, communicates with Montez, who informs her about Jess's fate. He then reveals that he knows where Jonas went and they decide to go after him. In the lifeboat, Jonas readies a harpoon with a bomb attached to it in case they need to attack the sea beasts. They consult a map and identify the nearest location to go. However, the place is known as the Island of Fun, a resort where many people are enjoying themselves. At one point, the people notice several dolphins fleeing something, but they don't suspect anything. On an island not far from there, a couple is enjoying a boat ride. As a man is about to propose to his partner, he accidentally drops his ring. He bends down to pick it up, but upon standing up, he finds his beloved missing. Suddenly, the boat shakes violently, and then we see the boat being swallowed by something in the sea. Approaching the island of fun, Jonas observes that his enemies have arrived first. We see Montez and Hillary, who have also reached the location. Jonas and his friends try to alert the people and urge them to leave the water, but their warnings fall on deaf ears. As the deadly trio of massive megalodons closes in on the island, Hillary's group is attacked by a carnivorous lizard-like creature. Montez orders Hillary to return to the helicopter. Hearing gunshots, the island's inhabitants panic, and chaos ensues. Jonas and his group split up to assist the people in the best way they can, and he instructs Mayin to stay safe in one of the lifeboat compartments. The three megalodons commence their attack, swallowing some people riding watercraft, while those still in the water are devoured alive. Jonas, Mac, and Joming plan to take some jet skis into the sea to lure the megalodons and attempt to kill them using harpoons with bombs. Meanwhile, Hillary awaits her men's return, but upon exiting the helicopter, she discovers that two of them are dead, and something watches her from the vegetation. She grabs a weapon and re-enters the helicopter, but one of the carnivorous creatures gets in and pulls her out. Subsequently, she is dragged into the forest. Upon reaching the beach, Jonas realizes there is only one jet ski available, so he takes the harpoons and sets off alone. Meanwhile, the other two head to a shed in search of something explosive. They find it, but suddenly, Montez's soldiers arrive at the shed seeking shelter from the carnivorous creatures. They discover the two hostages inside. It doesn't take long for Jonas to encounter the beasts, which quickly turn their attention to him. Two of them chase his jet ski at high speed. Suddenly, the third one emerges in front of Jonas. He narrowly evades the attack, 
causing the megalodon to plunge into the water. The creature quickly recovers and returns to its pursuit, narrowly missing swallowing Jonas alive. Back with DJ and Rigas, they retrieve a satellite phone from one of the deceased soldiers. However, a carnivorous creature appears, and they flee in fear. By chance, or perhaps misfortune, they arrive at the shed where Joming and Mac are held hostage. Joming notices a button that opens the door behind the soldiers. DJ presses it, releasing the creatures upon the soldiers. The group exits the shed, and Mac takes a bag of explosive material with him. Meanwhile, gunshots hit a gas container, causing an explosion. Joming and Mac search for a helicopter, while DJ radios for rescue at their location. Jonas focuses and heads toward a megalodon. He launches the explosive harpoon but fails to damage the monster. Suddenly, another megalodon approaches from the right. Jonas narrowly dodges the massive jaws. Using the resulting wave to his advantage, Jonas attacks another megalodon, severely injuring its head and causing the monstrous creature's death. He then searches for the remaining two, but the sea is calm. Meanwhile, Mac and Joming reach the helicopter, only to find carnivorous creatures inside. Joming distracts the beast with noise, allowing Mac to reach the helicopter. Joming defends himself with a shovel when the creature attacks. After the creature splits the wood in half, Joming impales its head, killing it. However, more creatures are approaching. Joming connects the fuel hose to refuel the helicopter, but they don't have much time before the creatures attack again. Joming falls to the ground, using the fuel hose to fend off the creatures. Mac fires a flare at the fuel drums, causing a massive explosion that kills the beasts. Jonas readies himself to attack another megalodon, but Montez surprises him and fires shots. Evading the bullets, Jonas accelerates and escapes Montez, heading toward the beach. Joming then constructs an improvised bomb using the materials they found. On the beach where people were still gathered, a massive tentacle emerges from the water and attacks the swimmers. Maying notices a woman in danger and decides to help her. She grabs a surfboard and rescues the woman. Joming sees her actions and maneuvers the helicopter to get her out of there. However, before he can retrieve her, the sea creature grabs the helicopter. Joming jumps off and Mac falls into the water. The megalodon that was pursuing Jonas arrives at the resort alongside him. He narrowly escapes being devoured. Jonas lands on a wooden bridge that gets destroyed by the sea monster, nearly sending Jonas into the megalodon's jaws. Fortunately, the monstrosity is held back by some chains submerged underwater. However, this restraint doesn't last. The creature eventually breaks the chains and continues its attempts to devour Jonas. Fortunately, it pauses, and Jonas falls into the water. Montez realizes Jonas is alive and moves to the wooden bridge, firing shots downward. Cleverly, Jonas grabs a wooden stake and wounds his enemy's leg. He gains the upper hand, takes Montez's weapon, and as blood drips into the water, Jonas notices the approaching creature. Just before Montez can launch a surprise attack, Jonas pushes him toward the megalodon, which devours and kills Montez. At the resort under attack by the giant creature, Joming gets ensnared by the sea monster. He asks Maying for the bomb. She tosses it to him, but he's quickly pulled underwater. Luckily, he still has the bomb and a machete. He manages to free himself from the tentacles, attaches the bomb to the creature's body, and it explodes. However, the creature survives and grabs Joming again, but one of the megalodons appears and attacks the sea creature as a predator. The giant creature uses its tentacles to ensnare the megalodon, but it struggles to control it. The megalodon bites the giant creature and drags it deeper into the water. Joming notices that Mac is trapped in the wreckage of the helicopter and rushes to help him. Seeing this, Jonas decides to assist as well. He swims to them, and when he sees the megalodon approaching, he swims to a nearby rock. Jonas takes one of the broken helicopter blades and strikes the water with it to draw the megalodon's attention. Successfully catching its attention, the megalodon swiftly approaches Jonas. Prepared, he lifts the sharp blade, resting it against the rock. As the monster attacks, it inadvertently bites the blade, which pierces through its head. The megalodon dies and sinks into the sea. On the beach, people emerge from the water, but one of the carnivorous creatures lunges toward Maying. DJ rushes forward with his weapon and kills the creature. 
In the sea, Jilming, Jonas, and Max swim back, but they notice a megalodon approaching. They separate, but Jilming stays behind. Using his sound-emitting device, he manages to calm the creature down and prevent an attack. Then, he leaves. The movie concludes with a scene depicting a helicopter rescue approaching the island hours later, while Jonas, his team, and a few survivors await the long-awaited rescue.